I hope your lunch was fine and that you have taken perhaps some coffee to stay awake during the afternoon. Uh, so this afternoon there is uh, in the first uh, one hour and a half uh, we will talk about uh, written text recognition and how to apply it, uh, how to choose uh, and train uh, a model and then we have uh, a 15 minutes break, break and then another hour where we can try to apply a good model to our documents. So now we have already done the segmentation, which is the, is the layout analysis, and we have two options. One is uh, applying an existing model, so one of the models made uh, available on Transcribus, and the other option is uh, create uh, our model for our language and our script, train it, and then apply it to our documents. Um, so, if we go to applying an existing model, we have to choose it. What is a model? A model is the tool that allows the machine to understand what is written. Um, it doesn't exist uh, a general model uh, for all the languages and uh, uh, all the scripts, uh, like it happens with OCR. Uh, we need uh, to have a model that is trained uh, to recognize a, chart, a certain style of writing uh, and how it works. We show images of these documents and their attached transcriptions to the, to the machine. The machine learns uh, and try to do the same uh, job uh, and uh, try to transcribe uh, by itself uh, the documents. The document, the model, uh, is, is, is trained on a certain number of pages uh, that are transcribed manually by humans. So it's also important the paleographical skills uh, because uh, it doesn't learn uh, alone. We need, Behind there is a human transcriber that teach the, the machine how to do. And these certain number of pages uh, are divided, uh, when we train a model, are divided in the training set uh, and the validation set. The training set uh, is the pages on which the machine learns. Uh, and the validation set uh, is the pages on which the machi machine tests uh, itself. So there are some, you learn, uh, the machine learns from some pages and then uh, check uh, it uh, on a page. If it haven't uh, obtained uh, a good quality, learn again and check it itself again. And this for many, many times. So. How can we choose uh, an existing uh, model? We have to consider different uh, elements. In particular, the language of our document is very important. There are uh, models get, that can be applied uh, to different languages. For instance, if I created a model for uh, uh, Italian documents, maybe it can be used also for French documents, but the accuracy will, will not be the won't be the same because it doesn't know the vocabulary. We need to, cons to consider the period. So uh, 16th century English writing is different from the 19th century. Uh, the hand, and there are some models uh, created for only one hand uh, and other models that are more general ones. Uh, and we need to consider the character error rate. This is uh, an element used, uh, defined by transcribus to understand uh, the accuracy of our model. So when we want to see how the model performs, uh, we, see the, we consider the Carter error rate. The Carter error rate is the percentage of incorrect characters out of the total number of transcribed characters. So it takes 100 characters and see 
how the machine performs on these red carters uh, and it compares it with uh, our transcription and then we obtain this carter error rate. The desired carter error rate is below 10%. Uh, if it is above 10%, a human transcriber is faster than the machine. If it is below, it makes sense because the correction of the transcription is, uh, helps improve the work of the transcriber. And even if you have uh, a Carter error rate uh, between 10 and 20 percent, uh, it can work fine if you search some words uh, and apply the keyword spotting uh, tool. So in this case, uh, also a uh, uh, Carter error rate above 10 percent uh, is uh, okay. But if you want to have a text transcription and you have to transcribe that, correct them manually, it is good to have something below 10 percent. You have to consider the number of words of the training set, of the training data, because one model trained on 10,000 words is different from a model trained on 1 million of words, because it have, the second one has seen a lot of more cases and probably more hands uh, and had, had a bigger, has a bigger vocabulary. Um, and so in this case, you have to compare, to consider both the character error rate uh, and the number of words. Then the learning curve, so how the, um, the, the model learns. I can show you this one, for example. Here you see the learning curve uh, it starts high and then it goes down. And this is a very regular learning curve. Then we will see it in detail. And then you have to consider the engine used to train this model. In, for unwritten documents, there are two engines. So it is, it, was it below the model? Uh, you can choose uh, between uh, HDR plus and Pilaya. HDR plus, uh, is, uh, is created by the Transcribus team and uh, it performs uh, slightly better than uh, Pilaya, like some percentage better, some cent better, uh, while Pilaya is created by the um, University of Valencia or some university in Spain. Um, and the difference is the accuracy, so the, car, uh, the final carter error rate, uh, but also the number of credits uh, you will use uh, to, to use one of these two engines. For instance, if I go there to transcribe the slide, uh, I go in the home, uh, I want to go to the collections. Sorry. Mm. I log out and log in again. see my credits uh, and if I use Palaya one credit uh, is one page uh, if I want to use the HDR plus engine one uh, credit uh, is uh, it's not one page uh, is a bit uh, less I need uh, 1.25 uh, credits to trade to use uh, to, tra to apply HDR plus to one page and since the credits are at the end uh, money, you need to consider that if you want to use uh, it on many pages. Um, 
this is because the Pilaya engine is uh, free and so in this case you pay only the service and the infrastructure while the HTR engine is uh, mm. so until 2018 it was free and then uh, they invest money to better it to improve it so now it is transcribes is proprietary of this uh, engine it's not a, it's not a, public, um, or at least the improvements that happen after the ending of the, fun the public funding. Um, so you have to consider this and to find uh, a balance between uh, the credits you want to use uh, and the accuracy, because the, if the HDR engine is really better, you have to consider that. Uh, and my suggestion is uh, if you train a model, uh, so to, cons to try to train uh, uh, two models, one with HDR plus and one with Pilaya, and see how it goes. If the Pilaya model is uh, acceptable, use it. And another option, uh, uh, things to consider uh, that uh, with Pilaya, you can't uh, use the keyword sparking, which is only available with uh, HTR+. So where do we go if we want to find, uh, at the end, uh, a model? There are some public models uh, and some and non-public models. So the public, you can find the public models uh, on the RedCop website, uh, and uh, it's this page, so you go there, there are all the 125 models. Here you see the, the engine use, a description who created this model, the language, the type of scripts, and the cart error rate. Obviously, if you compare it with the Transcribal models for printed uh, materials, the Carter rate is, is very, very low because the printed material is regular, more, more regular. And then you click on it uh, and you can see all the, the details uh, of this model, an example, uh, and a nice feature of that uh, uh, they recently created is this one. You can uh, select uh, a file, uh, so an image, uh, and, uh, apply, uh, and try the model uh, on uh, your, uh, your image without using credits. So if you are not sure which uh, model uh, is good for me, maybe there are different uh, options, uh, you can try and see how it performs without using your credits. Um, and here you can also select, uh, search uh, the models uh, for uh, century, language, uh, material, uh, script, uh, and engine, and also the character, see the character error rate uh, on the validation set. For instance, I can, then all these models that are here, that you see here, are, you can find them uh, also in the Transcribus Expert Client and in Transcribus Lite. It's, here it's easier to read uh, them uh, and see the images while because it's more interactive and you can browse them uh, while on transcript you just see a list uh, of all the available models. If I select uh, here English I want to see all the public models with English Okay, here we are. And English and writing, uh, the first one, the second one, I can uh, see the difference between them. And these are all for uh, printed uh, materials. For instance, these models have, are, have been trained on the papers uh, of Jeremy Bentham. And, uh, the difference uh, is probably the, the accuracy. So 
So this uh, is uh, as a higher character error rate that has been trained on a lot of uh, words, like one million words, while this one uh, has been trained on 50,000 words. So probably the second one, uh, this one is better. And uh, I can try to select a file and see how it works maybe with uh, bulls letters. This one. So you can't do all your documents in this way just to save your credits because it's really time consuming. <laughs> but if you want just to try it uh, on uh, a page, uh, this uh, is the result. Okay, it doesn't get you, but it's not uh, heal instead of we will probably but it's not so bad, uh, consider that uh, it is uh, a, a model that is ha haven't been trained on Bull's writings, uh, so it's the first, uh, the first try on that. Uh, if I try it uh, with uh, this one, uh, probably it should be worse. Uh, No, there is a problem with this model, not with my computer. So in this, and then you can uh, download it in a PDF doc uh, or copy the transcription. Um, and this is the page where you can search the tool, the model, the public models uh, available for your uh, documents. Are there 90? models in this page, but in transcribus there are a higher number. Well, if you go here and uh, you just want to see all the documents, uh, you see this long uh, list uh, of all the public uh, models, uh, and it's difficult to understand uh, which is the one that you want to, to pick up uh, and uh, try. Uh, try. There are also non-public models uh, that can be shared with specific users. For, for instance, I created uh, a model for uh, um, my, the author of my documents, uh, this uh, Medici agent, uh, and uh, it's, it is, maybe I will publish, make it, make it public on Transcribus, uh, but for now it is not uh, public, uh, and if somebody asks me, I can share also the model, not only the collection and the documents, but I can share the model uh, with uh, somebody else. And if you share the model, or if you put uh, the model public, uh, you don't need to share the documents. So you just share the tool uh, the, that you have trained, uh, but not the documents. Uh, so I think to consider when you see this is uh, how you see a, a model within the Transcribus Expert client. This is uh, for the English and writing uh, model, model three, and it's based uh, on the Bentham uh, writings and others collections. So I think to consider is uh, the character error rate, in this case is uh, 5.10%, which is quite uh, good. You have to consider the number of words uh, on which the, the, the model is uh, trained. And this is uh, 2 million words, is very a very high number of words. And also the learning curve. In this case, you see the red line, uh, the, the blue line uh, is how the uh, the model performs when uh, it learns, and the red line uh, in, is how it performs when uh, it 
it tests in itself on the validation set. So at the beginning, uh, it is so, and uh, this is the number of times, uh, the epochs uh, or iteration, the number of times that uh, it evaluates itself. So it learns uh, and it tests itself uh, and evaluates itself. And the model is good uh, if uh, from a high percentage the Carter error rate uh, slow down uh, and we obtain uh, a coincidence or something very near to a coincidence between the Carter error rate of the validation set, so the blue line, uh, and the Carter error rate of the training set, uh, the red line. I took this uh, from the Transcribus uh, um, user group uh, on Facebook, so one uh, user ask what was happen was happening with uh, his uh, training model uh, and this is for instance a bad uh, learning curve uh, because it is not learning uh, i don't know where is the problem because uh, he or she uh, didn't share the other details uh, so probably the number of words uh, is too low or uh, there are some problems at this moment with the servers, with the machine. But if you, so probably it is difficult that a model with this learning curve will be made public. But if you see something with that, it's not good. Don't consider it. And even if you find, so you obtain it as a result from your training model, try again, start again, and because when you train a model, the result is not always the same. Okay, so you can give some, even if the, the parameters are always the same, uh, it, you can come closer to another result, but it's not always the same. So when we apply an uh, existing model, uh, um, in the Transcribus uh, expert client uh, software, the first step is uh, choose uh, a public model. <clears throat> in the web page I've shown you before, or, put up or within the software. Uh, I recommend to first uh, make a search in the, uh, in the web, web website, uh, and then uh, pick it, pick, uh, choose it uh, in the software. Then you go to tools, uh, uh, so the, the section where the, there is also the layout analysis uh, and below there is uh, text recognition uh, and here you find uh, the, uh, this box. Uh, this box will uh, pop up. You can select uh, if you want uh, the current page uh, or all your, the pages of your documents uh, and uh, you have to click on uh, compute line polygons uh, which is the the, the default option uh, and it will simplify uh, the lines polygons uh, if uh, you if there are if so it will simplify uh, the polygons uh, of the lines uh, but we don't care so much about the, that and uh, so do polygon simplification uh, and also you need to click uh, that is nothing this screenshot I think but it's important to click on enable keyword spotting which is the tool to search uh, later the the words uh, also the one not transcribed extremely correctly you have to select uh, a model here and then you can run uh, the the HTR model I can show you here um, I select, uh, for instance, this one. Mm. Okay, you go here, tools, text recognition. You can also use uh, OCR if you have printed materials and uh, the number of credits it's very low if you want to apply OCR because it requires less uh, engine from the 
from the server um, but in our case we want to apply HTR so HTR plus or Pilaya here you can see all the models available and you can filter them uh, and see the for instance le the learning curve uh, with description of the model uh, and who train train hit uh, the carter rate uh, the number of words uh. but to run one page uh, you need to go here select the page uh, and uh, select uh, the HDR model. In this case, uh, because uh, I selected a Pilaya HDR model, the keyword spotting uh, option doesn't appear. If I select uh, another uh, HDR model, for instance, uh, I, was, I want this one. Uh, you see that enable keyword spotting appears here and you can you say okay and it asks you to uh, use one credit uh, and then the job uh, start, uh, starts. So we are in here, then we will see step by step how to do it. If you want to apply a model in Transcribus uh, Lite, uh, there are uh, um, different uh, options. You can, the, the more, e the easier one uh, is to select uh, all your uh, uh, documents, or th all the documents, uh, click on text recognition. Uh, so, First, you select uh, the document, uh, so all the pages uh, of this document, uh, then you click uh, on text recognition. Uh, you see it, this uh, um, section uh, pop ups, uh, and you have to select uh, the correct uh, model, uh, and then you can uh, uh, apply it uh, and start the it starts the recognition. There are other uh, options. You can also, I can show you directly in from Scribus Light. So when you are within one collection, you can click here and start. Uh, the, the text uh, recognition. The other option, if, if you don't want to apply the text recognition to all the pages, but only to some pages, you go here and you select the pages you want uh, and you apply the text recognition. You click, uh, you search uh, English uh, and you will see all the all the, the models that are good for for English you said you okay and another option is directly within the page you can go here and start uh, and start the recognition from uh, from here so if you use transcribus light or the the browser version of the expert client it doesn't change uh, so so much for this uh, for this section mm. okay there are questions are there questions no okay i was just to I want just to tell you how the searching tool works within uh, Transcribus. So you have your documents, you 
did the layout analysis and applied the HTR transcription tool and you have your transcription. Now you can uh, search the HTR transcription within uh, Transcribus and there are uh, different uh, options. So within the full text uh, search, uh, the full text search, uh, here you see it, is the normal search. So I typed uh, peste, which is the plug in, uh, in, Ita in the Italian word of plug, and uh, you can see all the occurrences uh, of this word uh, in my documents. So it indicates uh, the line uh, with this word, uh, the documents and the document and the page. Uh, and if you click uh, on the document uh, of the line, uh, you go to this uh, page with this uh, name or word. Then within this uh, full text search, there is also the fuzzy search. What is that? The fuzzy search is a search technique that allows to find similar words in addition to the exact matches. So if I'm searching the word PESTE, for instance, but the HTR model is only 95% correct, probably some words are missing. This uh, helps uh, to find also some similar words uh, that could be PESTE but are not, aren't transcribed as PESTE by the HTR tool. Then you can also search uh, the, the tags. Uh, this is useful uh, if you are adding tags, uh, for instance, places, names, uh, names uh, abbreviations, for instance, here I added, I'm adding all the abbreviations with the expansions, expansions, uh, and if I want to search uh, all the pages with the uh, the word uh, Papa, which means Pope, uh, the abbreviation of the words of the word Pope, uh, I can search uh, it, uh, and I obtain all the the results. And then there is this uh, keyword spotting technique, uh, which is only available if you use the HTR plus engine, so it's not available with Pilaya. And it is more powerful than the fuzzy search because uh, it enables you to search uh, words and phrases also in transcription with uh, Hena Hena rates. So even if the transcription is only 80% correct or 70% correct, it helps you to find words. And uh, it gives you also the confidence of the results. So you obtain a number between zero and one and tell you how, how much uh, the, it is confident uh, about its guess. Now we will see how to train uh, your own model. So there are two options at the beginning. The first one uh, is uh, there is uh, a public uh, model already available. Very good, uh, we will apply it uh, and we are happy with that. But if it's not available uh, or if it works uh, for your document but not so well, uh, you need to train uh, your own model. To start, uh, you need to have uh, a training data. So 50, 75 pages uh, that are transcribed by, manually by you within Transcribus. So you selected, uh, you select uh, um, these 50 or 75 pages from your uh, corpus and you, you apply the layout analysis and then you start to transcribe them uh, manually. Um, so you can transcribe them manually or if you want you can uh, apply a model uh, it, if exists uh, and then correct the HTR transcription. It depends uh, how good is the model because if it's not good for your documents, probably it will take more time to, to correct the, the transcription than to 
rather than to transcribe them uh, manually. There is the option if you upload uh, uh, some documents uh, in your collection, there is the option to select randomly 50 or 100 pages. And why it is important if you want to train a model? It is important because uh, probably it helps you to, to randomly select the pages uh, and have a variety of uh, hands uh, or of uh, um, layouts uh, uh, because the hand can could change uh, within a manuscript uh, or uh, the words changes. Uh, so if you have different uh, types of documents uh, or different hands, it's good to use this ran to randomly select uh, your uh, the documents in your collection. Otherwise, for instance, in my corpus I have three ends uh, and I, select, uh, I selected the pages randomly to create uh, my training data because if I picked only the pages of the first volume, I would have, be, I would have only one, uh, a model only for one hand and not for the other two that appears in the other volumes. Uh, and then uh, there is uh, the other, the last option, which is the text to image tool. And it is a tool that tries to match uh, existing transcription on page level to a line segmentation. So if you already have uh, your transcription, uh, for instance, you, uh, you have your tra the transcription of your documents, uh, you can, um, when you upload, uh, the documents, uh, the images, uh, you create uh, a text uh, file in the folder with the transcription of that page. And this tool try to automatically match the lines uh, of the layout uh, made uh, for the layout analysis and the lines of your transcription. And in this way, you can upload, uh, easily upload your transcription before training a model. So instead, instead of transcribe manually or copy and paste. What is important when you train your own model? It's important to first uh, to be consistent. Uh, so if you transcribe uh, uh, an abbreviation uh, or uh, um, yeah, it happens especially with the, with the abbreviations uh, or with special characters. If you trans or punctuation, so that abbreviation you need to transcribe always that abbreviation in the same uh, way. You can change it uh, during uh, your uh, during your work. In the case of the abbreviation, transcribers suggest not to solve them. So just transcribe uh, the letters that you read uh, on the page. If there is a, a, a capital S uh, with uh, a full stop, uh, transcribe uh, an S with a full stop, not the expansion that could be Signore, for instance, in Italian. So transcribe what you read on uh, the page because the HDR works better if the training set uh, is uh, close to the text written on the page. There are some models that uh, are trained to expand the abbreviations, but uh, it works, uh, for example, with the, there is a, a model uh, based on printed text, uh, uh, on Latin printed text, uh, and in this case, the abbreviation are solved uh, within the model, and it works successfully, but because they have a big uh, number of pages uh, in the training set. So for, if you have 100 pages, uh, probably it's not enough uh, for the machine to learn also to solve the abbreviations automatically. Um, then you need to, know, to decide uh, which special characters you want to use, uh, because maybe there are some signs, especially medieval and early modern manuscript, uh, and you don't have the exact character uh, to transcribe them, so you can decide if you want to use all the special characters at your disposal, or in my case, for instance, I 
put one character for that indicates many abbreviated words, many types of abbreviations, and uh, write uh, so your decisions uh, in some somewhere. So you you document uh, the, the the what the decisions you have taken to create your model, and at the end uh, you know oh, how because. If you start transcribe manually, the first pages you remember your the, in the first pages uh, you remember your decisions. But later, after 100 pages, probably you don't remember them. Uh, and uh, it's good to have uh, a, a file to go back uh, and know how. When I find this uh, sign, which uh, is uh, I don't know for money. Uh, that indicates money, I know that I'm using these special characters. Um, yeah, and to train uh, a model, you need uh, to go in the tools section, uh, in the tools section, under text recognition, and click on train. So this uh, is, uh, we are always here, well before we click on run, uh, the text recognition. Now we go here to train a text uh, to train our HTR model. So there are this section to this uh, section to complete. This is uh, the model name, description, and language. Even if you don't uh, think to public your model on Transcribos, if the model is only for you, it's good to add this detail uh, because maybe you don't remember later what the model is trained on. Uh, so put the date, uh, the number of words, uh, uh, a brief description of the hands, the centuries uh, of your documents, uh, the provenance of your documents, the archive, the library, and always and also add the, the language. Here you can decide uh, if uh, you want uh, to train uh, a PLIA model or HTR plus model. Here there are the, the distinction. With PLIA you can change, uh, uh, you have more options uh, to, to change the settings if you know how um, deep neural network works. Uh, so I tried also Pilaya, but with not good uh, results, but it could probably depend on my documents. So because training a model is free and you don't use credits, you can try to train uh, one HDR model and one Pilaya model and see how it work, how they work. They charge on the experts as well as on the light. Yes. Okay. So you have uh, 500 free credits uh, when you register. Yeah. So around 500 pages uh, for unwritten documents when you register. Then uh, you need to buy some credits. There are also some options for the universities, some mm -hmm. packages. Uh, if you are a PhD student or you use transcripts for teaching, you can ask uh, some free credits uh, for. Uh, your research, uh, yes. Okay, yeah, no, I was just wondering, because we, we were thinking of um, using this with a PhD student next year, so I just wasn't sure what the, the model was. But sure, I can talk to you about that later. Like. Yes, so there are the prices on their, uh, on the pages. Okay. Uh, and so it's, so it's not so clear, the con so you have to consider the connection between the money and the credits, it's not one euro, one uh, yeah. credit. And if you want to apply, um, and you can select uh, uh, PILAIA, HTR, or OCR uh, and see how it costs. Uh, for instance, I can show you. Um, okay, 
uses in it. But if you're training a model, that it's free. Yes. It's free. Okay. And also, so the credits are only to uh, are only to apply HDR to your pages. If right. you uh, use uh, layout analysis and then transcribe manually, or if you collaborate with the in transcribers, if you train a model, it's all free. Yeah. When you want to apply it, uh, yeah. it costs uh, a bit because there are, so the work is not on your computer, but on, on their servers in okay. Innsbruck. I see it in, morning, there in it in the morning. There are also options, uh, um, free other free softwares, uh, like a scriptorium, uh, but uh, you can't run it on a normal computer. You need uh, some powerful computer to do it. So it depends if you have an IT service that can help you to to mm -hmm. run it. Okay. In, so for me, this is more user friendly because everyone can do it uh, without coding skills. So here you see, you have at the beginning 500 card credits, uh, and then it depends about. Uh, the subscription, if you are a COP member, so, so if you pay annually the subscription, in this case the COP member, members can be private, but also mostly there are universities uh, and uh, libraries, archives. Uh, for instance, for uh, um, here you can calculate uh, the credits. Uh, I want to recognize uh, 500 pages. Uh, with uh, a written text recognition uh, and uh, using HDR plus. Uh, this is the most expensive one. Uh, is uh, 625 credits. Uh, and you go here and you select how, how much. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you, ca you can't buy 625 credits, but uh, you need to buy 1000 credits uh, and uh, and then you can apply okay. it and uh, probably it depends about so the they can you have to check it but they can also be shared between uh, uh, users mm -hmm. um, the first uh, 500 credits are not shareable but if you buy a package of credits uh, you can also share them with others but it's, it's something to consider if you are if there is you want to apply transcribers to a project uh, and to request it uh, put it in the funding in the, yeah. in the funding. Um, if you go if you want to transcribe, for instance, uh, printed uh, books, uh, it get, it took uh, a low number of uh, of credits, uh, and yes. So we are here, and the element uh, here, I'm talking about the HTR plus uh, engine, uh, it asks you to say the number of epochs. The epochs or iterations are the number of times that the training data is evaluated. By default, uh, the uh, number of epochs is uh, 50. Uh, you can maintain 50 for the first uh, the first uh, um, model you train uh, and then try to uh, to increase uh, it uh, if it is necessary so if we, we go back uh, okay here you see the number of uh, epochs so the number so don't consider the learning curve which is strange here but this is the number of times the that the training set uh, is uh, evaluated so in this case uh, where we have the in this case uh, at some point uh, it doesn't improve uh, anymore it reaches level and the cur curve doesn't improve uh, doesn't decrease uh, anymore so they suggest you to put uh, the first, at the beginning to train it at 50 epochs uh, and see how it works uh, because probably after 50 it doesn't improve so much. Uh, and uh, have in my in the models I train I always set it to 200 epochs uh, 
and the difference is because it is quite uh, new that they put this uh, default uh, option um, it takes uh, more time and to the server to create from the model and it is it doesn't necessarily improve uh, it if you have a very high number of epochs so if you put 800 epochs uh, it's not sure that uh, it will help uh, your model to, to be improved. So. Okay. Then you have the option also to add a base model, uh, this option. What, it is very important, uh, the, this option, uh, this option because uh, you can add uh, an already existing model created by you or by somebody else uh, as a base uh, for your model. So if I want to, in, you want to train uh, uh, a model for bulls and writing, uh, you can use the model I showed you before, uh, the one trade on Bantam, pap Bantam papers as a base model. So it already knows the language uh, and some similar scripts, uh, uh, some hands, uh, and so the, the model, the new model and the training uh, doesn't start from scratch, but has based. Uh, and usually, in my, as far as I know, adding a base model improves uh, the final result of your training. Uh, obviously, it needs to, to have some connection with your documents. If you use, if you want to train an Irish model uh, and you don't have, you apply a Italian based model, it doesn't work, okay? And this is helpful also if you want to improve uh, a second model, you want to train a second model, you can train a first model and then use it as a base model for a new model that you want to train. This option is to omit lines by ta uh, that the, has the ta tag gap or unclear in case you, you aren't able to read some lines, some words, uh, you can tag them uh, and don't include uh, them in the training data. Reverse text uh, is uh, if you, the writing is uh, from uh, left to, to write, so I don't believe in our cases. And uh, this is a new option, this train text and include properties. It's a new option of the um, of Transcribus, uh, of the latest version, and you can train also the text, uh, for instance, the text of the abbreviations, uh, you can tell the machine to learn uh, also to automatically add tags uh, and its properties. I haven't tried it, but I will uh, try it uh, soon. Um, and these are the settings uh, of your model. Then you have to choose uh, the documents that of the training set uh, and the documents of the validation set. The validation set uh, is uh, normally 10% from your uh, data. So 90% of your document of you of the document transcribed manually are used uh, to train the data and 10% are used to validate uh, are used to train the model and 10% is uh, used to validate uh, the model. Here you have uh, all your documents with the transcriptions. Uh, you can uh, select uh, which transcription you want. Uh, and uh, there is also this option to select, automatically select 10% uh, uh, for the validation set. And it is helpful because in this, also in this case, you randomly select uh, your validation set uh, and you are sure that you have a variety of uh, pages uh, and uh, hands. And then you click on this button and you can start uh, to train uh, your uh, 
documents, your, your model, it takes uh, some hours, I would say, so it's not uh, fast, but uh, if you start it in the night, uh, the, in the morning you will have uh, your model. The general rule is this, the more pages there are in the training data, the better the result will be. So you can start with 50, 75 pages, but obviously if you give the machine more data to learn from, the model will improve. Have we seen with two, the model before, two million, two million words. So now there are some questions. Are there some questions? No, okay. Now I would like to tell you how I train the models of my project uh, because maybe I can share with you my experience and how it goes. Uh, so the first model I train one, one hour, uh, two, hour, two years uh, ago, uh, it is called Italian Administrative Hands and it is a general model for various hands, uh, archival hands, uh, um, documents in Italian written between the 1550 and 1700. I created it in collaboration with uh, other three researchers, uh, Jake Dabble, Antonio Iodice and uh, Rachel Midura. And I believe that for a general model, a collaboration is very helpful because you have uh, different types of documents, not only your own, and you can share the effort with others. So at the end, uh, the training set uh, is uh, 60, 70,000 words, so around more than 200 pages. And uh, in four, uh, it, it was easier to transcribe uh, these pages ma manually. And if you are alone, uh, it takes uh, really a lot. And yeah, the nice thing of this is that uh, there are several hands uh, and the character error rate uh, on the validation set uh, is 10.80%. Uh, uh, so it's not below the 10%, but it's good uh, because it is uh, a, a general model. And now this model is public available on Transcribus. I believe it is good and I recommend to make the document, the models public, your models public on Transcribus. So it's not straightforward. You need to send an email to them and say, this is my model and uh, it's good uh, and can be used for also by other researchers for this reason uh, because uh, it has different hands uh, or uh, it covers uh, a language uh, that is not pre not present uh, and uh, they will put it public uh, and everyone can use uh, it in this way you we and we um, help the community to apply HTR because there are also um, people outside academia or uh, yeah, volunteers, uh, amateurs uh, that, uh, are, that are using Transcribus uh, and maybe they don't have uh, the, the time uh, or the resources to train their own model. So having a model already trained is very helpful. And uh, at the same time, uh, a model can be used as a base model. So your model can be used as a base by somebody else. And, and at the same time, it gives, you, it gives more value to the effort you've done to create uh, this model. Um, and you can add uh, uh, a description of your model in the web page there is uh, the the author and you have uh, credits for that uh, so there is it appears your name uh, and uh, the name of the collaborators uh. then uh, i decided uh, to run uh, to create uh, a model for cosimo bartoli which is this medici agent uh, 
and have a say. Uh, there are three hands in this corpus partly his hand, his son, and uh, a secretary. Uh, it took me a lot of time uh, to no, some months uh, to obtain uh, a good uh, a good model and I tried nine versions of this model to obtain uh, a satisfactory um, character error rate uh, something that I was that I'm happy with so the first uh, step uh, was to randomly select uh, the pages from my volume so this is important because I don't I want uh, uh, different examples uh, of hands uh, and documents and not only the pages of one volume uh, because my documents are in a cover stand years uh, so the first uh, years is a bit different quite different from the last uh, and I want different examples then I run uh, on these pages the Italian administrative model I have to say that I run this uh, before the before the paywall was introduced so probably now I would uh, transcribe manually all uh, because it doesn't make a lot of sense to run uh, a, a model then correct and use credits then correct uh, it manually and then train a new model probably it's better to just transcribe manually the first uh, 50 or 75 pages then I manually corrected all these uh, these pages and I train uh, the first uh, versions, version 1 and version 2. I wasn't happy with that, so I, add, I added more pages uh, and I trade a new version, which is version, version 3. I added again new pages uh, and I trade version 4, 5 and 7 and at the end I proofread uh, the text uh, and the layout analysis uh, and, uh, in, and I trade uh, the latest versions uh, 7, 8 and 9. Probably you would ask, you would know why I create different versions. I played a bit with some variables to understand what help, helps to improve the character or race and what doesn't improve it. And in, especially, I I try to use a base model and see how it works. I changed the number of epochs, so the number of uh, iterations. I changed the number of transcribed pages, and I see how another difference is the proofreading of the text and the layout analysis. So this is uh, the um, all the um, the data from the nine uh, versions, and here you can see the difference between. Uh, using a base model and not using a base model. In my case, the base model is the Italian administrative hands model I created collaboratively, but you can use another model public in Transcribus that it's, it's similar to your documents, but it's not exactly the same. So in version one, I used the base model. In version two, I didn't use it. And the difference uh, is quite is significantly is significant, uh, and uh, the same happens in version four and five. So, in my case, uh, the base model uh, helps to improve uh, the character rate uh, and helps to obtain a better uh, uh, a better model. Then uh, I try to increase uh, the number of epochs. Uh, and uh, I have to say that it, it doesn't change uh, so much. So in this case, between version uh, 4 and version 6, uh, in version 4, the number of epochs is 200, uh, and in version 6 uh, is 400. Uh, but the character error rate uh, doesn't improve in version 6. 
and the same happens with uh, version 7, 8 and 9. In version 9, I, the, the number of epochs uh, is uh, 800, so a lot, uh, but at the end uh, the character error rate uh, is uh, worse than better. Um, yeah, so in my case, uh, trying to increase the number of epochs uh, just took uh, more time uh, to do this uh, to, to, to the server to obtain, uh, to train the model, and I didn't receive uh, an improvement uh, in, the, uh, in the validation, in the character error rate. So I probably don't recommend it uh, to change it. Maybe you can try with uh, 50 and 100, 200 uh, epochs, uh, but uh, more is not necessary. At least uh, it could work uh, if you have very complicated uh, documents, uh, very complicated and, and okay. writing. So can you explain again what the epoch is? I know you already so, <laughs> so, yeah, Sure. Uh, it's the number of times uh, that uh, the training data is evaluated. Okay. So it's a, so mm, the machine takes the training data and uh, it learns uh, from your transcription. Then uh, it takes uh, a new page and try to do it do it by itself. Uh, and then compare his performance with your transcription. Okay. And it, it does it uh, 200 times, uh, this, uh, this job. Okay. But in the learning curve, you see that uh, at some point it doesn't Very improve. Good. Yes, we have a plateau, and it doesn't lower. Sorry to be having to ask a stupid question. When you say it does it 200 times, does that mean it needs 200 separate pages to compare it against that you've already done? No. no. So it, Thank you. So it, it went through all the pages, uh, the first epoch. So it learns all the pages uh, and evaluated it, evaluated itself uh, in comparison to the validation set. Uh, and this is one epoch. And then it does it again, okay. again, again, and oh. again. So okay. you don't need 200 pages. Yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> then Another variable is the number of uh, words. As you can see here, you see how the number of words uh, increase uh, between the versions and how the, number, the character error rate decreases uh, from version one to version seven. This uh, is normal uh, because as I said before, uh, with more pages and more words, uh, the the character error rate uh, improves uh, more. What is strange uh, in uh, my case, uh, and I will explain you why, uh, in version four, uh, we have uh, 52,000 words uh, and a character error rate uh, of 6.43%. Uh, in version seven, we have uh, a lower number of uh, words uh, and uh, the character error, but also the character error rate uh, decrease uh, to 5.70 percent. In this case, uh, between version 4 and version 7, uh, I proofread uh, the, uh, the transcriptions uh, and the layout analysis. So I read again uh, my transcriptions uh, that I did them uh, in several months, uh, so probably I, at the beginning I wasn't so accurate, uh, accurate, or I changed uh, some ways to transcribe uh, the abbreviation, the ways that I was transcribing the abbreviation, and I check checked uh, it again, and uh, I also uh, check again the layout analysis, so that the lines the the baseline and the line region comprises all the text. Um, yes, and at the end, I have to say that uh, this helps uh, 
so not so much but help helps a bit to, to improve uh, the the carter error rate so it's not only necessary to have uh, a large number of transcription or a big number of words uh, but it's also important to be consistent uh, because otherwise if you have an abbreviation uh, or uh, a, a sign in the document and you transcribe it uh, in different ways uh, the machine is confused about it and doesn't know how to do it and at the end uh, I obtain uh, this uh, uh, the final version which is uh, version uh, 7 it was trained on 150 pages uh, and uh, the validation set uh, was uh, 18 pages and the carter error rate is 5.70 percent uh, which means that uh, 94 characters out of 100 are transcribed correctly and uh, for example yeah, the example is in Italian, uh, but uh, uh, it gets, for example, this, this symbol, which stands for Scudi, but it doesn't get the, the I below the symbol, uh, but it's correct, it's uh, transcribed correctly, uh, animo, which is uh, an abbreviated word, and so I believe that a 94% uh, 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 correctness uh, is good uh, if you want to search words uh, and search uh, places. Uh, and also if you want to do uh, data analysis on these uh, documents. In my case, I'm creating an, a digital edition, so I need to have 100% uh, correctness. For this reason, I created a crowdsourcing project uh, to help participants to, to correct uh, the HTR transcription. But if you are not looking for an edition, but you just want to search uh, certain words uh, or extract the data and uh, apply other types of analysis, probably it's enough. And there are a lot of, uh, a lot of archives uh, using uh, this technology, even if it's not 100% uh, correct, uh, to make uh, records and documents accessible. Uh, so you, mm, all these documents have been digitized, uh, and uh, but it's impossible to create uh, inventories or catalog catalogs at the document level uh, because they are some they are very big. And maybe there is the catalog, but at, at the folder level. And in this case, uh, the documents become searchable and you can search uh, a word, uh, a name, a year. So it's very helpful, but you need to consider that uh, it is not 100% correct. So maybe you can miss something, but it happens also with OCR and it is something you need to take into consideration. So then, there is a, so I decided not to solve, not to, to transcribe the abbreviation as they appear and not to solve them in the, within the transcription. So then I applied a script created by Ismail Prada, a researcher, to tag and solve the recurring abbreviation. Maybe it can be useful for medieval manuscript also. And uh, I created the, a file with the abbreviations and the expansions. For instance, these are all the abbreviation for the word Constantinopoli, which is uh, today's Istanbul. And uh, then uh, I applied uh, it to my documents and it automatically add, uh, so it automatically tag uh, all these words uh, as an abbreviation and, and write the expansion uh, as a, a, a property. So it doesn't appear in the text, uh, but it appears as a tag. And for digital edition, this is more correct. It, it always depends what you want to do at the end uh, with uh, that. 
uh, and this is the final result. Uh, so you have uh, this uh, P, which stands for a pair, tagged. I oh, know this is an example with animal. You have these four letters tagged, and here you see animal. So the expansion is as a property, as, and it isn't within uh, the transcription. Um, have I said before, uh, in the new version of Transcribus, uh, there is this option, uh, train tax, uh, and I believe uh, it will uh, try to train the annotated text uh, so that the, the model uh, automatically add text uh, for you. Uh, but have uh, it is an option that I have uh, to try because it's uh, new. So for now, I have just applied this uh, script uh, written by uh, this guy. And uh, yes, there is also, uh, you can also connect uh, to Transcribus via API uh, and you can upload and download uh, in this way your documents, which is a more technical solution. Tech solution. Then we arrived, so we have uh, applied uh, HTR with our model or with a public model, and then uh, we want to export uh, our documents. We need to go to this uh, little uh, mm, sign. It is a folder with a green arrow in the opposite direction. So this uh, one is for import your documents and this one is for exporting uh, your documents. And then you see this uh, pop-up uh, window. There are two options, the server export uh, and the client export. If you click on server export, uh, you will receive uh, an email uh, with a link uh, and here you can download uh, the, the transcriptions uh, from uh, this link. The client export, uh, it download uh, the transcription directly on your computer, but not always it works, so it's better the server export. You can decide uh, to choose the document, to download uh, the document, all the document or all the collection, and also which pages of uh, your documents. And you can choose uh, which format uh, you want to download. This is really interesting because you can download uh, your transcription in different formats. Uh, for instance, uh, the transcribus document is uh, their format. PDF uh, and the PDF, uh, there are different, in, for the PDF there are different options. You can do download the images plus the text layer. So you have the image and below, in correspondence to the lines, you have the, the transcription. So the PDF, the images, uh, become searchable. Or you can download the, the images and as an extra page, uh, the text uh, depends what uh, you want. You can download is, uh, the documents as TI. TI is uh, a, a standard uh, for digital editions. Uh, and in this case, with TI, you can see all the tags uh, and uh, it works very well if you want to use it uh, in an ad, uh, for a digital edition or uh, do something um, analyzer with uh, later with uh, other tools uh, as a doc, doc file, uh, simple text, you can export uh, only the tags, you can decide which tags you want to export. So if you have, if you have tagged all uh, the names in uh, your uh, collection, you can export uh, just the names uh, and maybe do a network analysis on the names present on, in your collection. You can export a table, but I'm not, not very expert uh, because I don't have the tables in my documents, or the page uh, metadata. 
uh, and then uh, you here you click uh, uh, which version do you want to export uh, which page the current page or all the pages of your uh, document uh, and which tags uh, you want to to export uh, and then you click on ok so um, this is all for now